Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Reacts. Today we're checking out a brand new film theory about how the dinosaurs in Jurassic World are not dinosaurs. And if you technically think about the science behind how they were created, yeah, they aren't. Because, as, as they say in all the movies, they had to fill in the gaps with some frog and lizard. So, if anything, they're not dinosaurs as uh, dinosaurs. If anything, they're more of just giant reptiles. No, wait, that's literally what dinosaur means. You know what? Let MatPat explain it. Let's kick things off with a mini theory. You know how every what Jurassic Park movie features dinosaurs chasing humans all over the place looking for a snack? Classic. Yeah, probably wouldn't happen, especially when you're talking about the big boys like the T-Rex. You see, T-Rexes are apex predators that need a daily caloric intake of 200,000 calories. The Damn. average human body contains a little over 125,000 calories, which is pretty darn huh. close to that 200k daily oh, yeah, limit. So at first, that would make it seem like humans are the perfect high-efficiency snack. The power bar pick-me-up for a dinosaur. You so just need two a day. There's a problem with that. The human is going to run away. Animals are primed to find the most efficient sources of food. And oh, considering that an adult so T Rex right. topped out somewhere between hmm. 15 and 25 miles per hour while they run, or 24 to 40 kilometers an hour, hmm. any human with a halfway decent car is going to be able to get away. <laughs> I don't think so. No, Jeff Goldblum, yeah, you, you can maybe. listen to her. You don't oh. gotta go that fast. <laughs> Must go faster. And that's not even mentioning our ability to hide in huh. small spaces. A massive okay. six-ton T-Rex being forced to hunt down a fleeing or hiding human would be hemorrhaging massive amounts arms. of energy. Suddenly, that high-efficiency snack has turned into a high-efficiency workout. And if wow. you're gonna be spending those calories in hunting, the payoff is gonna need to be much bigger. For proof so of this, just look at really other apex predators in the up. wild today. Hmm. Both lions and wolves can go for that's almost a week or two without food before finally getting themselves a good catch at which point they end up eating up to a fourth of their body weight in one sitting wow. believe it or not some crocodiles can go for a year without a meal before they end up chomping down on half their body weight that pattern holds I've for many that. large modern day predators with these animals getting weeks or months worth of calories all in one sitting these are feast and famine animals if they're going nice. hard after a meal well it's got to be a big one a human just wouldn't fill that need huh. for a t-rex why go after a puny human when there's a chonky stegosaurus that can give you more food that's easier to He's take right. down. It makes scenes like this one in the movie, where a T-Rex leaves a big kill it's already eating to go run after some humans <laughs> that are a fraction of the caloric value. So anything, Absolutely it ridiculous. Been, it no wonder the Spinosaurus kills the T-Rex in the end. It was meal. the far smarter animal. Well, Welcome that's something I didn't think of. Jurassic Park. Hello Internet, <laughs> welcome to Film Theory, the show where diving into the lore your favorite franchises has been genetically inserted into our DNA. <laughs> so if you were a child growing up in the 90s, it's likely that you saw Jurassic oh, Park and fell in love with it. Seriously, this movie and its various sequels create an entire generation of dinosaur kids. Except, uh, you know, there, there, yep. there's one problem with that. What's attacking the humans throughout the series, yeah, they, they aren't dinosaurs. That first part was legit. But the giant reptile. They didn't need these genetic hybrids, they just needed dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, real dinosaurs. Actually, forgettable side character, that's not what I meant. Even before they started mixing and matching genes in the reboot trilogy, they oh, were yeah, real dinosaurs. They've never been real dinosaurs. And that's probably a good thing, because if they were, well, Jurassic Park would be about as dangerous as an aquarium. It would yield Wait, one really? really boring movie. So today, we're going to be building our own Theorassic Park to Ooh. show you why a park made of real dinosaurs is probably going to be the safest zoo ever. Don't believe me? <laughs> Let's right. go. Let's now, this first part is something I bet a lot of you already know. See, despite the original Jurassic Park really shaping a lot of how modern pop culture views dinosaurs, <laughs> these aren't nice. real dinosaurs. And I don't mean they're animatronics or CGI or whatever. What I mean is that Obviously. while it was impossible to know what exactly dinosaurs looked like, it definitely wasn't True. anything like this. For the longest time, all we had to go off of to figure out how dinosaurs looked like were their fossilized bones, which led to a great hmm. deal of artistic liberty being taken with the imagery that we now associate with them. Many artists grossly the underestimated the amount of lizard, soft tissues like, like fat sucks. that dinosaurs had because almost none of it survived the process of fossilization. So their interpretations were actually way skinnier than dinosaurs probably were. Yeah. Professional paleo artists or kind of people who create art of extinct creatures call this misinterpretation shrink wrapping. Just to give you an idea of how wildly different dinosaurs might have looked, in 2012 a group of paleo artists released a book called All Yesterdays featuring art that imagined how modern animals would look like Ooh. if they were shrink wrapped the same way as dinosaurs. 
dinosaurs. Like this okay. beauty right here. What do you hey. think that thing is? Those sickle-like arms, that sinewy neck, those terrifying claws. It's a swan, just a swan. But you immediately oh. get the idea of what they're talking huh. about here, right? Jurassic Park's oh, art direction hey, no, used I a see. lot of that shrink wrapping technique, giving us a heavily skewed perception of what these things would have actually looked hmm. like. They also gave all the dinosaurs scaly okay. reptilian skin. However, over the past three decades, paleontologists have concluded that while many dinosaurs were scaly, some of the really nice. iconic ones like the Velociraptor and T-Rex were most likely covered in feathers. This was proven um, with the discovery of fossils Velociraptor, like Archaeopteryx maybe. found in Germany in 2016. Notice the feather indents all around its wings. That oh, same yeah. year, a 99 million year old piece of amber found in Myanmar was discovered to have wow. preserved an actual dinosaur feather. Sadly, no dino DNA to extract it. and clone from that one. The filmmakers behind Jurassic Park responded to the discoveries by politely ignoring them and continuing to peddle <laughs> scientific lies. Look, I get it. I it understand why. Go These conclusions were reached we well think. after Giant the first Jurassic Rizzle. Park came out when they had already established an iconic look for their big monsters. They even had written in an in universe I mean, excuse because these dinosaurs were spliced with reptile. frog DNA, which could potentially explain the difference in appearance. Mm. And the fact that our understanding yeah, that of dinosaurs has evolved since Jurassic Park has been lampshaded by the more modern films, like here in Jurassic Park 3. What John Hammond and InGen did at Jurassic Park is create genetically engineered theme park monsters, nothing more. Hmm. Nothing less. And in Jurassic oh, World. Yeah. And if their genetic code was pure, many of them would look quite different. But you didn't ask for reality. You asked for more tea. So dinosaurs <laughs> IRL would clearly tea. look different. Good. But all this research got me thinking, what if we did ask for reality? If we were somehow hmm. able to clone dinosaurs and completely recreate them without any sort of genetic trickery that the scientists use in the movie, it how would, would they incredible. fare today? What would we have to do if we wanted to make a real film theory approved Jurassic Park? The Theurassic Park, if you will. Well, loyal theorists, that let me tell you, the real Jurassic old. Park wouldn't look anything like we see in these movies. Want to see it? Well, come along. All right, then. First, we're Let's gonna have to specify this. what exactly is gonna be in our Jurassic Park. See, what we broadly consider to be the dinosaur times actually covers hundreds of millions of years, which are grouped into multiple geologic oh, periods yeah. with cool-sounding names. The Jurassic period was just one of those, covering the massive stretch of time between 201 million years ago and 145 million years ago. Look at that. However, most of the big ticket. <laughs> dinosaurs that we'll want in our park actually hail from the Cretaceous period, which was much more recent, spanning from 145 million years ago to 66 mm -hmm. million years ago. That includes That's the T-Rex, like the Velociraptor, Triceratops, Brontosaurus, Mosasaurus, exactly. Parasaurolophus, See? basically all the major players from the movies. I guess Cretaceous Park didn't sound quite as cool for the branding. Yeah. Anyway, because yeah. we want reactions like this... That's kind of why we just have mm -hmm. Jurassic. You said you've got a T-Rex? Uh-huh. Again. That's the period we're going to be examining. But let <laughs> yep, me tell you, on. recreating the ahead, conditions folks. for these animals to live comfortably is... Cut. And we're back isn't going to be as easy as picking out the right tropical island for sale. <laughs> Pretty much everything about the environment was completely different during the Cretaceous. Well, yeah, for instance, the Earth been. was much hotter back then. Only the highest latitude mountains show hmm. evidence of glaciers and consistent okay. year-long snowfall. The planet was so warm, in fact, that dinosaur fossils have been found just 15 degrees off the Cretaceous South Pole, which would be the oh. equivalent today of finding a T-Rex chilling out with penguins down in Antarctica. This okay, is all because the Cretaceous cool. Earth was what's called a greenhouse world. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was about 1,000 to 1,400 parts per million, sometimes even reaching as high as 2,000. By contrast, wow, pre-industrial revolution human civilization was keeping CO2 levels sitting at around 280 parts per million. More recently, it's climbed up to about 409. Even still, wow. the world these dinosaurs lived in had an atmosphere with between 2.5 to How, 5 wait, times more CO2 it, oh, than our own. Giant, it might not sound like okay. that big of a deal, but it giant is. Reptiles, it meant yeah, that more. global okay, average that, temperatures were about 9 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than they are today, or 5 to 10 degrees Celsius hotter. Additionally, Ooh, the overall climate for the terrible. Cretaceous was a lot more consistent worldwide. The difference in temperature between the equator and the poles could be as little as half as what we experience today. Damn. This means that dinosaurs were likely mesothermic, meaning that they were somewhere between warm and cold-blooded. They had some ability mm -hmm. to regulate their body temperature, but they didn't need to because the Earth's temperature was much more stable. TLDR, the dinosaurs at Theurassic okay. Park might find the modern world 
a bit brisk for their taste. A bit As too responsible cold. zookeepers, we're gonna have to account for that. But obviously, a higher amount of CO2 in the atmosphere is gonna change more <laughs> than just the temperature. It's gonna affect how these dinosaurs breathed. Scientists are reasonably confident that dinosaurs breathed oxygen, and despite elevated like CO2 most, levels, there uh, was still crystals. plenty of it in the atmosphere during the Cretaceous period. But scientists can't agree on how much oxygen there was. By oh, analyzing air bubbles trapped in amber between 130 and 67 million years ago, oxygen some studies have shown that oxygen could have made up as much as 30 to 35 percent of the atmosphere. Holy. Other studies have that number much lower, comparing the makeup of fossilized plant resin to modern day plants to conclude that the atmospheric oxygen levels could have been as low as 10, 10 to 15 percent. Regardless, Whoa. both of those numbers are this actually is... very different from the modern day oxygen level of 21 huh. percent, and a swing that large in either wow. direction would be problematic for any dinosaur trying to live in the present. You see, if the Cretaceous atmosphere contained 30 to 35 percent oxygen, breathing modern air would be dizzying for the dinosaurs. You ever so, travel up a mountain after spending a lot of really time at sea level? Live. If you have, you'll know that it's exhausting. More than it can sometimes take movie. days for your body and brain to adjust to the thinner levels of oxygen in the air as you climb further and further above sea level. Now, think mm. about a dinosaur that lived by breathing air that was over 35 percent oxygen. Over a third. Well, it would be like a person wow. going from sea level <laughs> to a mountain that was 9,500 feet tall, 2,900 meters. It's certainly That's not impossible dangerous. to survive. I mean, people have evolved to live in elevated places like Tibet. Life, uh... Finds a finds way. A way. Thank but you, these Mr. dinosaurs Goldblum. would likely have something similar to ongoing altitude sickness, suffering from nausea, dizziness, and headaches all Ooh, the time. In some terrible. serious cases, altitude sickness can cause a buildup of fluid in your lungs that can be fatal. On the other hand, the dinosaurs evolved good. breathing an atmosphere that was just 10 to 15 percent oxygen. Jumping up to modern day levels would add 25 to 50 percent more oxygen than they were used to. At that point, hmm. they have to worry about the opposite problem: oxygen toxicity, a condition that oh, you get when yeah, you breathe in right. too much extra oxygen. This can harm lung tissue, cause parts of your lungs to fill with fluid, or cause oh, them to collapse. In some geez. serious and severe cases, it can even lead to death. Basically, bodies evolved to breathe very specific mixtures of air, and any significant so, deviation from that mixture- So really, if we want to build a park for dinosaurs, we would have to enclose where the, the they would be. It couldn't just be walls, and that was it. They'd have to be enclosed, like what they had to do for Kong in uh, Kong vs. Godzilla. I mean, Godzilla vs. Kong. Y'all know the movie. I mean, Kong was in that dome. They would have to do that for the dinosaurs here isn't going to be too great for the dinosaurs in our park, which again, is going to present us with Oof. some very serious problems. But beyond just the survival of our dinos, something it. else that would be lame about our park is that most of our star attractions are going to be asleep during peak hours. Several paleontologists uh. <laughs> have theorized that a surprising number of dinosaurs were actually Shit. nocturnal, and we know this because of a very that specific is. type of fossil. As we've already discussed, huh? soft tissues within and around the eye basically never survive the process of fossilization. Yeah. However, sometimes yeah. the scleral rings did. These the are bony rings around the eye socket, which help to support the eyeballs of animals with eyes that oh. aren't spherical. Paleontologists oh, have been able to okay. determine the size and shape of dinosaur eyes That's based exclusively on these rings, which in turn helps them to determine if the eyes were built for daylight or low light situations. Oh. Animals that operate okay. during the day, they have plenty of light to work with, so their scleral rings tend to be thicker. Nocturnal animals, on the other hand, need to get as hmm. much light into their eyes as possible, meaning that their scleral rings tend to be thinner, leaving a okay, wide hole in the skull. This was most hmm. common in theropods, including one of the most popular dinosaurs, the Velociraptor, the Velociraptor. a fact that the Lost World nice. actually used to great effect back in 1997. Anyway, okay. considering that dinos like the Velociraptor are going to be a big draw for the park, and I doubt that any guests are going to want to be out at 2 a.m. to see small raptor chickens, <laughs> well, we're going to need uh, to do something yeah, about simulating a reverse day-night cycle for some of these guys. So, for the film theory Wait, approved Jurassic both? Park, we're actually dealing with huh. a lot of issues. We're working with yeah, animals that are living at elevated temperatures with. that need to be consistent year-round. They're used to a hot CO2 rich atmosphere. They're used to a precise level of oxygen that was either meaningfully higher or lower than present day and will hmm. want to be able to simulate lighting conditions to reverse day and night so people can actually see some action. This sure sounds like a lot if we want the dinosaurs to be happy and healthy, but difficult. I have a solution. A theoretical solution. All right, see, man, a real world got? Jurassic Park is possible if and only if all the dinos live in giant terrariums.
Oh, there it is. <laughs> yep, just as lame as it <laughs> That's sounds. That's actually like my dome Jurassic idea. Park, each terrarium could have artificially managed levels of both oxygen and CO2. It would be much okay. easier to control the temperature huh. inside each terrarium so the dinosaurs are in environments that they're comfortable with. And within a terrarium, huh. we could simulate so a day-night cycle dome using blue light LEDs, thereby recreating yeah. day during night and vice versa. And you want to know the craziest part of all of this? A Jurassic Park designed in this way with real dinosaurs in mind would be so much safer than we see I in the see movies. Now. The dinosaurs huh. would be in entirely isolated environments. Sure, we'd have to sacrifice look, the whole petting the zoo dome. angle, but like not a single guest about. would ever get close enough to hurt or be hurt by a dinosaur. And if there were ever to be a breach in a terrarium and the dinosaur escaped, well, the massively different temperature and atmosphere would daze the creature, exhausting <laughs> and confusing it right it as it dealt with either altitude sickness or oxygen toxicity. In turn, that would make it easier to recapture and return to the proper habitat. Meaning it's wild no how much differently the events of killed. Jurassic Park would have gone down if, you know, they had actually cloned dinosaurs as opposed now. to creating whatever weird genetic hybrids these things are meant to be. Don't worry, I'm not making the same mistakes again. No, you're making, you're making all new ones. No wonder <laughs> no one wanted to invest Classic. in this thing. Mr. Hammond, after careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. Yeah, because they're investing in mine, <laughs> but now. hey. Even with the incredibly dangerous genetic oh. hybrids from Jurassic Park, there was still so much more that InGen could have done to make their park safer, both Truly. for the guests and for the dinosaurs. If you want to know what Truly. three simple fixes could have saved Jurassic Park, click the video that you see on screen <laughs> right here. Or if you want to watch us uncover the conspiracy that do- Well, I think uh, that's it for this video. So, I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Down in the description will be a link to the original video, so remember to support the original creators and all they do, and I'll see all of you folks next time. Have a good one.